what if Damien became a legendary blader? This is an interesting question because as we remember, Damien is one of the stronger non-legendary bladers. In that group, you have names like Subasa, Masamune, Deshayan, and then Damien's there too. I mean, this guy defeated Team Excalibur all by himself in crazy fashion, but unfortunately, we didn't see him in the next season. We saw Zio, we saw Jack, yet no Damien. But what if that was different? What if Damien returned in Metal Fury, and what if he did so as a legendary blader? For this hypothetical scenario, I see two possible ways it could go down, but before that, we have to address the arrangement system. We all know Damien only became a beast after having arrangements, and he gets some hate for that. Yes, it kind of is cheating because he didn't really earn that power, but the arrangement system brings out the power from within you. It's power that you technically already possess, so yeah, it's not really fair because he didn't train to bring that power to the surface, but it is technically his own power. So I guess you could say that a blader on the arrangement system shows the potential level that they could reach by training hard. I bring this up because we saw Toby, we saw Zio, and we saw Jack. They all fell off after stopping their arrangements, and the same thing is going to happen to Damien. But because he was so strong with the arrangements, it means he has a lot of potential. The arrangements drew out power that he already possessed deep inside, so this means if he trains really hard, he could get back to that level naturally. It'd be very difficult because this time he'd have to do it the real way by working hard with his Beyblade, but it is possible for him to become strong again without arrangements. And for this what if, that kind of has to happen as one, there are no more arrangement systems, and two, it'd be weird to have a legendary blader who's only strong because of a machine. So yeah, for Damien to be a legendary blader, he needs to be strong again, and this time he'll have to do it the real way. So, now let's hop into the what if. Shortly after the events of Hades City and the defeat of Hades Inc., I think Damien would just leave everyone and everything behind to go off on his own. He was supposed to be the chosen one, but now he's been defeated along with everything he stood for. Damien's ego, his spirit, and his pride have all been broken by Jenga and Kyoya. You could even say that Damien himself is broken at this point. Now, I don't know what exactly he'd be looking for. I just see him going far away by himself. And after a little while on his journey of self-exile, a star would fall from the sky and land in Hades' Kerbex. A broken Damien would immediately feel this new power flowing through Kerbex, but also flowing through himself. This power has the potential to be stronger than any arrangement he could have ever received, and I think with this, Damien would be back. He'd still be pretty weak early on, but as time passes, he starts learning how to get stronger with just his own power. Damien and Kerbex create a real bond, and Damien becomes Becomes a true blader. Through time, they'd only get stronger and stronger until eventually Damien would feel that he's ready to officially return to the Beyblade scene. So that's how Damien could get to the legendary blader power level from square one all over again, but this time he'd do it as a true blader. I think this would be a pretty cool character arc for Damien to go on if he did return in Metal Fury. Like, I'd almost call it a redemption arc, but not in the sense of going from evil to good. This is more of redeeming himself from being a fake blader to now becoming a real one. But anyways, this arc would have to take place right after Metal Masters, and it'll have to wrap up roughly by the revival of Nemesis, because that's when all the legendary bladers are found. I've also decided that I'm gonna make Damien one of the last legendary bladers to be found. This will allow his true blader arc to have as much time as possible, because it's gonna need that time. Realistically, it would take a while for Damien to build up his strength naturally from square one all over again, so I wanted to give this arc as much time as possible, and Damien being one of the last legendary bladers to be found helps give us that time. So at this point, we know how he became strong again, and we know he'd be introduced pretty late into the season, but now we have to decide whether he's going to replace an existing legendary blader, or if he's just going to be added as an extra legendary blader. So I posted a poll to see what you all thought, and most people wanted to see Damien replace an existing legendary blader, so I gave it some thought, read through your comments, and it came down to three candidates, Yuki, Tithi, and Chris. I do think all of these options could work, but at the same time, they all come with their own sets of problems. Yuki's Beyblade is based off of Mercury, while Tithy is based off of Venus, and they're descendants of the original Solar System Legendary Bladers, and Damien and his Hades Kerbex obviously don't fit that theme, so that's problem number one. And I don't even think Damien's Beyblade is based off of a constellation, so him replacing Chris wouldn't make much sense either. So, none of these options are perfect, so what I decided to do is I'm gonna replace the character mentioned the most in the poll, and that's Yuki. However, Damien's not going to be the new Mercury Legendary Blader. That just doesn't make sense. Instead, I think I'll make Damien loosely related to King Hades. We already have Pluto and Rago, 
who I think are both full descendants of King Hades, so we could do something similar for Damon. He doesn't have to be a direct descendant, and honestly, it might be better that he isn't. Like, just imagine this for a second. The ancient city or country that King Hades ruled over, imagine it was surrounded by huge walls that protect it, making it impenetrable. And on one side, there would be a huge gate that acted as the main entrance, and obviously there would be people there watching over any potential threats to the city or country known as Hades. And what if the main guy in charge of that job, who would have been handpicked and trusted by King Hades himself, was actually the ancient ancestor of Damien. That would make Damien a direct descendant of the man who guarded the gate to Hades. Does that ring any bells? Guarding the gate to Hades? Damien's Beyblade is literally the guard dog of Hades. His whole special move is opening and closing the gate to Hades. So not only would this make sense, it's also a cool way to tie in Damien with ancient legendary blader lore. So that's one way to do it, but we could also just say Damien is Pluto's long lost brother or something Thing like that, making them both full descendants. People have mentioned that they kind of look alike, so that could work too. Either way, this makes Damien at least somewhat connected to all the history associated with the Legendary Blader plot, and it won't just feel like a random addition thrown in. It would also explain why his whole character is so intertwined with Hades. Now, the whole Solar System Legendary Blader thing is kind of thrown off by this, but it's fine. We'd rather do that than mess with the Bladers of the Four Seasons, because if we change that group too much, then suddenly we can't borrow the power of Gaia, and that's a huge problem. So we have Damien as a legendary blader, replacing Yuki. He's loosely related or fully related to King Hades, and he'll be reintroduced late into the season as a true blader. Now that we know all of that, let's go over this altered timeline of Metal Fury. The start of Metal Fury stays pretty much the same up until we find Damien. Yuki is still going to exist, and he's still going to be in that observatory. Nothing's going to change with Yuki besides the fact that he just won't be a legendary blader anymore. So he's still going to see the star fragment split into 10 pieces, except this time he's not getting a piece. He'd still see out Jenga and Kiyoya, he'll tell them the story, and everything else will still play out the same. Chris and Aguma choose the bad side, while Jenga and his gang try to find everyone, and all the while, Damien is going on his true blader arc that we talked about earlier. And towards the end of his little arc, he'd feel something calling out to him and Kerbex. Something oddly familiar. The revival of Nemesis would attract Damien to the temple, as in this hypothetical scenario, he's related somewhat to King Hades and Nemesis. And because he started his journey in America, We'll say he made his way all the way down to Mexico. He traveled all the way down through Texas to the ancient temples of southeastern Mexico, and he was training the whole time. This is where he'd meet Doji, Rago, Pluto, and the rest of the gang. And this is where things really start to change, because now Nemesis gets awakened with the help of four star fragments instead of just three. I'm not sure how much stronger Nemesis would be at this point with an extra star fragment, but it should be a considerable amount. So now the enemies have a lineup of Rago, Chris, Aguma, Damien, Doji, Pluto, and his gang. And they even have Dynamis for a bit. This is a pretty scary lineup depending on how strong Damien is. I mean, if he progressed relatively the same as our other characters from Metal Masters, he's probably going to be a top five legendary blader. That might be highballing it, but definitely in the five to seven range. So now we're at the point where all the legendary bladers would meet in the temple and a handful of battles take place. Most matchups would stay the same, but some have to change as the bad guys now have an extra legendary blader. But this would still lead up to Ryuga versus Nemesis. Ryuga still loses and he still gives his power to Kenta. But here's where the big change happens. I think Team Nemesis wins. The good guys only won because Jenga called on the strength of every blader across the globe, and even then, they won by a very thin margin, so I think if you were to give the bad guys, who, again, barely lost, a whole nother legendary blader, I think they could win. It would speed up the revival of Nemesis, and it overall just make their team stronger. I don't know exactly what the turning point would be, I don't know who exactly Damien would beat in the battle, but with an extra legendary blader, I think they'd just be too much for our good guys. And yeah, Jenga could still call on all of that power from everyone across the globe, but I think Team Nemesis could end it before he gets the chance to. And this would mean Nemesis is successful, he gets everything he wants, the world is destroyed, and a new one is born. Pretty sure that was his goal. But yeah, that's gonna conclude the what if. Kind of a grim ending. Not gonna lie. But it was cool to think about Damien redeeming himself and becoming a true blader. I also thought it was cool trying to connect Damien to the Legendary Blader plot by making him a descendant. But yeah, that's gonna be the video. Let me know in the comments what you think a 4D evolution of Hades Kerbex would look like, what special features would it have, 
and also comment what videos you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.